allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Oh, good evening and welcome to all of you. Uh, Megan, if we can have a roll call. Claire Menard. Here. Dina Kreitler. Jan Braun. Donna Rash. Kelly Pollard. Here. Casey Benner. Here. Laura Oliver. Here. Jack Ketting. Here. Tom Hooper. Here. Richard Griminger. Here. We have a quorum. Okay. Good. And I haven't heard anything from Sandra, but I think she's probably going to be on her way as yeah, soon as she is able to get here. Um, uh, everyone has a copy of the agenda. And I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. A second. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Thank you. And you should have in front of you copies of the previous minutes from the previous meeting. And um, I have given them a glance over, and they look pretty good. All of you, why don't you take a second and take a look at those. Good evening. Hello. Is Kelly here? Oh, there you are. <laughs> I almost forgot your brochures. <laughs> I move the minutes be approved as submitted. Uh, second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any additions or corrections? OK. Very good. Uh, do we have any citizens to be heard? No citizens here. We have some citizens. They just don't no, know. No, we're not citizens. You're not citizens. You give up your citizenship when you become a public servant. Oh. oh. <laughs> or, or a reporter. <laughs> or a reporter. Okay, I think you're up. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm just going to pass this around. This is the tourism related uh, financials. These are, um, you've seen this before, but these are the uh, key accounts, revenue and expense wise, that the uh, city treasurer tracks on behalf of uh, tourism. And so um, she doesn't have the September numbers uh, set yet, so these go through the month of August. Um, so you can see there's different categories. You've got tour revenue and expenses. And for instance, the uh, tour revenue was a little higher than anticipated this year, and so Expenses were also higher, but they're generally a proportion of the total revenue. Um, and those are obviously uh, tours coming into St. Genevieve. Uh, printing, postage, um, the co-op revenue and expense. The co-op uh, grant program we've discussed before uh, occurs over a different fiscal year than the city's uh, fiscal year does. So. Sometimes those revenues and expenses aren't balanced out exactly with our fiscal year. Uh, the department marketing budget at the end of um, at the end of August was at 33,000 on a budget of 35, and I think that we came pretty close to that in September. And then um, there's a line item there for a tourism tax commission revenue and uh, marketing expense, just because as we discussed at the workshop, that does tie into our overall marketing program, even though it's not a function of this committee necessarily. We just try to track it so everybody gets the big picture. 
um, and then meetings and conferences. Um, so that's our financial report um, for this month. And as soon as um, she sends me the one that has September in it, I might just email that out to everybody. I think so that'd be fine. Yeah, thank you. If you don't thank mind. Um, and then uh, I brought with me, uh, tonight. I know we're going to uh, be talking about the TAC work session, and I think most people um, participated in that. But I brought with me tonight some of our recent um, advertisements. Um, these are always ones that people enjoy seeing. I know that um, we talked about some of these at the um, <coughs> workshop last week, but in particular I'd like to point out um, a couple of these because both of these have actually driven foot traffic into um, St. Genevieve in the last couple of weeks. Um, so you know that one of the things that we do is from time to time we host travel riders and so um, and media and um, video crews, we reported on that um, I think at the last meeting. And so um, recently there was a, um, an article that appeared in a Minneapolis paper, um, the Star Tribune, and it talked about history preserved in St. Genevieve, and I'll just pass this around, but you'll notice that it's a photocopy with a lot of notes on it. There was a couple from Minneapolis area with this article in their hand with all of her notes on it about how they decided to take this little mini trip and come down and come to Missouri, and they saw several things while they were here, but this was like their to-do list of what to see in St. Genevieve, and they had brought some friends with them. And as they're sitting there on the couch in the Welcome Center watching the video, People across from them, who they'd never met before in their life, lived 20 miles away from them in Minnesota, had seen the same article, and they introduced themselves on the couch in St. Genevieve, which I just thought, talk about serendipity. So I thought you might get a kick out of that, because that's a good example of, you know, you never know where that seed that you plant is going to bear fruit. And so we're very glad that it did. And then this is just one, um, I mentioned this in the meeting last week, the Webster Kirkwood Times and the South County Times. These are just really good um, target markets for us. They bring a lot of people to St. Genevieve and this, is, this um, publication in St. Louis has a very loyal readership. And so um, I've marked, this is the South County Times and the Webster Kirkwood Times, so I'll pass these around. They both do a special section in the spring and fall about um, getaways that you can do from the St. Louis area. So the yellow tab has um, the St. Genevieve page on it. And this is also for those people. So I just thought you might enjoy seeing those. Um, I had many people come up in, at the Best Missouri Market and say that they'd seen that. That particular, yeah. the Webster Kirkwood mm -hmm. one that just came out? Yeah. yeah. So that's a really nice one for us. Um, and we did it, Tom, as you know, we did it a little bit differently this time. Mm -hmm. We did an advertorial. Um, and in the past, we've done like our branding ad and then try to get, and Show Me Shop has participated in downtown renewal. Um, to get various merchants to participate uh, in that um, advertising and then um, kind of show them what St. Genevieve really has to offer. This time we tried to do that in writing and pictures, which is also very effective. And um, I might even suggest that we might want to do that more often than just the two times a year and just do a little, you know, article and words included. Um, is that actually the same picture? Yeah, it's the same. It's just two different papers. So once you've seen it, you've seen it. Um, then the other thing uh, that we had talked about recently is um, our new, well, our reprint of our brochure, the multi-page brochure. Um, and Kelly and Jan, Jan isn't here tonight, but they're both on the uh, committee to work on that brochure revision. And I brought up at the meeting last week, um, I'm going to try to find some um, additional artwork for the um, rack card, which we're also going to be reprinting because we need some more of them. So if there's anyone who in particular would like to get involved with like the print projects and especially um, like helping me look through uh, photos for one that might be appropriate for the front of our rack card. Um, Please get with me after the meeting. I 
with the chair's permission, we can add them to the do, uh, special committee. I was going to say, do we, we do have a, com a committee for that, do we not? Yes. And who is on that? Do you recall no. who is on that committee? So Kelly and Jan are on the committee. Okay. Yeah, and they do a great job. Um, and we only have to do it every you know couple of years. Right. So, um, right. So we would entertain volunteers yeah. if they wanted to get into the fund and be part of the print committee. <laughs> committee. You bet. You bet. <clears throat> so um, making these extra copies with the the eyebrow. Oh, that's in. yours. Oh, but feel free. Well, so this probably doesn't have it. Doesn't. There's okay. We would need to. Uh, yeah, I don't have a copy of the committee members. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, or if I did, I have misplaced it. Okay. So um, the other thing that um, I wanted to just point out in particular, well, two things, okay. Um, we talked about, uh, last week we talked about um, our, you know, we have an integrated marketing communications plan. This includes print, radio, television when we can afford it, um, usually sponsored by the TTC, um, our outdoor uh, impressions, which are the billboards, and it also includes our digital uh, presence. And so one of those is our um, search engine marketing. And so I thought that the committee, um, we usually do this every couple of months, but um, Here's a front and back sheet that I'll pass around, and one side of it, these are black and white copies. Um, we're running low on ink at the Welcome Center, so one side of it has all of the bar graphs, and you can see um, that in 2017 versus 2016, all of our bars are much higher in terms of the clicks. Um, and then on the back, it shows um, so in Google AdWords, we have many different uh, keywords, and those are grouped into AdWord groups. And so um, what you see on this pie chart, um, and I'll just pass this around. Um, what you'll see, oh, shouldn't be one side. What you'll see on the pie chart are Kelly, let me give you those. Okay. I don't know why that one looks funny. Okay. Are the ad words that are most frequently clicked? And these are there, are there, these words. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, those are ad word groupings. You can see up there clicks by ad group at the top. Um, and so, visit St. Jen has certain words that are included under it, as does lodging, as does recreation and outdoor. But you can see those percentages off to the left. Um, the words, the keywords that are included in Visit St. Jen um, constitute uh, about 49% of the total clicks, followed by lodging, which is at 22%. And then recreation and outdoors, wineries, historic homes and tours, dining, events and festivals, shopping and art. So. Well, all of these are important, uh, you know, once you get into the website, the things that tend to be clicked on the most frequently are those things that occur in um, the Visit St. Jen ad group. And so the next thing I'm going to pass out uh, is the first page of uh, about a six-page report that has all of our keywords in it. I didn't want to bore you with all of them, but I wanted you to see the ones that are most frequently clicked on. And so, and then it shows you the keyword on the left and what ad group it falls into on the right. So, maybe more information about uh, keywords and clicking than you might have expected to ever see, but I just wanted, if, if this hits somebody's hot button and this is something you really like, let me know because we can talk about fun things like keywords and ads. Oh, did you hear? So that's just one single sheet. Oh, you got my copy. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Here, here's another single one. She's she's got one. You got them? Yeah. Okay. So what's what's the difference between a click and an impression? Uh, so the impression is when it was served up, and the click is that someone actually clicked on, on that. So that's a click through. 
and we generally have a very good click-through rate for Visit St. John. And so right here it says Bed Beverage in Missouri with 31,000 people clicked on it, but 318 clicked through into a St. John website. And, and that's on that one keyword. So, mm -hmm. and then, so you notice how on the left you have keywords like, so we spell St. Genevieve wrong because we figure several people will probably <laughs> type in ST, right? I mean, why would you unless you really, really knew that it was STE? So um, we had probably, well, over two to one, three to one people that clicked on St. Genevieve with no E versus <laughs> the E, you know? Um, so if you think about it, you could add those two together. It's just a spelling semantics thing. But on the left, you have the keyword, and then the right, you have the ad group that it falls into. And so um, uh, you see the things that fall into Visit St. Genevieve. You see the things that fall into uh, lodging. Um, and these are things that uh, people are typing in and then what they're clicking on. So. Um, Again, this is just uh, kind of a summary report, but if there's someone who, find, like Laura, you mentioned last week in particular, um, you mentioned um, social media amplification, so I knew right away that you get this whole keyword and clicking kind of a thing. Um, so I would just encourage any member of the committee that's interested in this kind of thing, if you ever have suggestions, you know, you might be driving down the street and think of a keyword that would be really great for us to use don't hesitate to call me. Um, would love to add that, you know, whatever your idea is. We can add it out there and see what kind of clicks we get on it. And it, it, just, these kind of statistics just, there's a whole new science of marketing that, yes. you know, years ago people would never have even thought that you could do this. Right. And this is, I mean, this is really the nuts and bolts of, uh, you know, when we uh, first went through this with, um, with our search engine marketing team, um, this was painful. I'll just say, it was, I would think, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. to go through all of it. But um, what we there was a process by which we went through, like, what are people searching for to see what kind of the organic kind of things that are out there, and then we brainstormed. Okay, so let's put these names in. Let's put you know things that they might type in, not realizing you know like maybe they're typing in wine country, they might mean the Herman wine country, we might pop up, and vice versa, of course. So, uh, so that is information specific to our search engine um, marketing uh, effort, and uh, this report went, the, the one with the um, pie chart on it went from January to June 30th, because I was working on something for the fiscal year, uh, the state's fiscal year at that time. And then the other one, I asked him to send me all of our uh, keyword results since the beginning of the year. So there you have. So Google or whomever it is will compile these figures for you. Uh, actually, I mean, we pay for search engine right. marketing, and so we get okay. these results from our uh, team that. Um, but you don't have to do it physically. No, thank God. I'm That's what right. I was thinking. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, right. Well, you know, we talk about like, like Pear Marquette Park. That name is not unique to St. Genevieve. Correct. You know, so people searching that might, they may find us by accident. Right. They might, well, so. They go, oh, well, that's not what I was looking for, but look at that little town. I exactly, think I might want to go there. <laughs> exactly. You'd be surprised how many people, when they hear that we have a Pear Marquette Park, they're like, oh, is that the one? No, it can't be, because that's, yeah. and then they figure it out. Yeah. But. But you still want to come here. Right. <laughs> we got them. We got them to click. Right? Uh, yeah, so, and, and those were some of the things that we kind of threw in as an afterthought, like we took everything on our um, visitor's guide and threw it in there, and, you know, like, like alphabet soup, really. And, um, and these are the kinds of things that people are, are clicking on. So. I can tell I don't spend nearly enough time on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing some things. <laughs> so, and if anyone wants to see the all the way down into you know bushes in terms of um, uh, it wasn't six pages; it's only four. Okay, well, just hang on to that. We'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. And then um, there's one other thing that uh, we touched on 
last week in the workshop that I thought I would just bring some additional information about this. So we talked about um, asking people to sign our guest book down at the Welcome Center. And about 30% of people will sign the guest book. And then um, we take that information and, you know, we try to distill it down for if they, if they told us where they were from, we track that on one sheet. And then if they tell us how did you hear about us, we try to track that on another sheet. And so um, just to give you an example, in um, the first six months or so, uh, and this is always the case. This is a, the case across not just our destination, but all the way across the state. The number one thing that people say, how did you hear about us? Friends and family, of course, um, which is actually kind of the beauty of social media because if you know Jack has come here on vacation and he posts to his Facebook page, had a great time in St. Genevieve, these are the fun things, people trust what friends and family say. That's why TripAdvisor is so key. Um, so that's the number one thing uh, in the first six months 162 of the people who told us how they heard about us responded friends and family and so um, that was followed by Facebook and social media um, that was followed by magazines of various sorts and then the next two highest were ancestry <coughs> interesting and um, uh, well, billboard and road sign, but repeat visitor was actually a little bit above that. Um, we had 43 people that said they had been here before and came back, which is, that's really important for us, actually, to have people have such a good time right. that they want to come back. Come yeah. back. Yeah. Sure. So, um, so I just thought I would share that information. I mean, these are things that, um, that we track all the time. Here's, uh, oh, and so there's a page two to this. So. Uh, website and the internet was actually 80. So after friends and family, that would be our highest. Um, and then there's the elusive other category, which 52 yeah. people <laughs> said other. But I just wanted to share that because it came up last week during the workshop, so I wanted to point that out. And it might even mean that they don't remember. Right. They don't remember, like, how'd you hear about St. Jennifer? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. You would be surprised how many times people say, I mean, it happened at least twice today. It'll be a couple, and they'll say, you know, we've been driving by here for years mm -hmm. and just decided that we're going to stop today and see St. Genevieve. That's fantastic. Sorry it took them years to do it, and they always find <laughs> out there's more here to see and do than they have ever thought. But they may have a child at SEMO. They might be going to their, uh, you know, like snowbirds, and they're going south for the mm -hmm. season. A lot of times, I mean, Megan will remember from being down there how many times people would say, um, you know, we've been meaning to stop for years. And oh, finally I hear it all the time. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and they, are, they are sad if they get to town at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, well, we, we need to come back. We didn't, we didn't have enough time to do it all. <laughs> well, you need at least one whole day. Maybe I'm one. always sad for them when they come at yeah. 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Because yeah. you're like, you got one place you can see before 4, and one place you can see before 5, and you better get going. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, what about you at the show me shop? Yeah, you? all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've been meaning to stop for years. Mm -hmm. All the time. For the new ones. I never thought this little town would be like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have so much to. But yeah. by and large, they're happy when they get here. They, yeah. oh, this is we like it. It's well, cute. It's charming. It's had people in today. Said, Are there other places we can walk to? It's like the whole town. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the wineries. I'm a hike to most of the wineries. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Under old business, we have the work session, and uh, we did have a work session, and all of you have copies of notes from that session. I think we are all here, yes? No, yes. Here come the notes. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, and I think there were some good points brought up at the work session, and a couple of things that I thought were um, pretty significant. One is Laura's suggestion, our question, what is it that we can do 
how can we help Sandra? Um, I like to exit a meeting with an action plan. What is it that we're supposed to do now? And we haven't done that lately. And uh, we now all have copies of the bylaws. That is a good thing. We're going to talk about those in just a minute. And I guess, did everybody get a copy of this? I guess we did of the marketing plan. The we can make more copies for the. No, you weren't here. No. Okay. okay. So um, yes, yes, you need a copy. But this is a really good marketing plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I mean, all plans you should revisit periodically to say, Megan, okay, I don't are, know we, if you've got the, are we on task? Oh. Do we still want to visit? Is this still our marketing plan? Is there anything we want to add to it? But as it stands now, it is a it is a good document, and it is a good marketing plan. And it covers pretty much everything that I would think about as far as marketing goes. And so it might be something that should be revisited every couple of years. I think as it stands now, it's... I, I make adjustments every year. And yeah. usually um, this was the first time working with whole the whole committee and talking about it. But typically it's talking with the chair about right. uh, those kind of things. And the yeah. feedback that I get during the year is very helpful. Yeah. But it's a, it's a good idea to, to just revisit it every couple of years. And even the whole committee can do that. But as it, is, as it stands now, it is, a, it is a good document. And it obviously represents a pretty good chunk of work, too. And I was going to ask, did this come from you? Yes. So this is newspaper circulation. Yes, this is. Um, that's one of the things that was in the handouts last week. Right. Would you like for the ones that weren't here to have, I mean, I'll just make a copy of everything for the ones that weren't here. Those are the, like the Webster Kirkwood Times, right. Belleville News Democrat, yeah. the ones that we talk about frequently and that really <coughs> have served us well in terms of niche markets, target markets, um, and the circulation. I think Tom had asked for that right, information yeah. about yeah. the circulation. St. Louis, St. Louis to Cape, yeah. And yeah. the region, you know, what areas they cover. Especially the ones that we have relationships with and that we can get. Yeah. Because I think that the ad that you, that the, that full page, those type of, of things and the expanding social media is a really effective way to drive people to the to here and also to the website to get more information to come here. Yes. And, those, and expanding those things that, are, that really seem to be working well are great ways to, for us to, to move forward. And that's a good point, Tom. We, um, when we do paid print advertising, I now require uh, digital to go with it if they have that program available. Yeah. We, um, so, in other words, the um, Webster Kirkwood Times or any of the others, if they have the ability to put uh, a digital file on their website so that when people, like if you, you know, read a publication online and you can click through to our website. So we do a lot of that print slash digital piggybacking. Right. Because a lot of what used to be print media is now, even by subscription, it is online, a lot of it, yeah. Yes. Or their websites, like for instance, right. if we do a radio ad, uh, radio and web, they a lot of times, even when you listen to them, they'll say, for more details, go to, you know, yeah, Kelly in the Morning uh, or whatever. Yeah, you, yeah, you listen to the radio station on your computer. Well, that too, yeah. A lot of them. Yeah, yeah. or in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So they can hear it and go to their website. So we'll have, a, you know, like a rotating ad there because we advertise with them. Yeah. Good. All right, any other discussion about the work session, work meeting, work? Uh, uh, you probably had some thoughts about it. Well, first of all, let me ask Kelly and Jack, do you want a hard copy or would you prefer that I email this to you? Just email it. Okay, okay. that'd be fine. Okay. Um, so, I, Laura's suggestion about amplified social media and um, I kind of tried to touch on that in the notes. So for those who have active followers on social media, so if you have a Facebook page, Instagram for your business, or um, a Twitter account, and uh, I know several do, and I know probably most of the wineries have a really loyal following, um, 
I think, you know, amplifying what we're doing on their social media could only do good things for both of us because we're the designated marketing organization for, you know, shops in the downtown and wineries in wine country or downtown. And um, a lot of them have loyal followings already on their social media. So, you know, if, if we post something and they can um, repost it or boost it, um, that you're coming up with that as a suggestion uh, was fabulous. And, um, and I think that maybe this would be something, I mean, Laura, would that be something that you'd be willing as a liaison to like the Rue Duvin to take back to your next meeting and say, hey, this is something that came up. Sure, yeah. I think they would be willing to, some have probably some, more active than others. Yeah, and some are more on the St. Jen side than the Farmington side, or, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So everyone has their own business model, but right. I'm sure several would be agreeable to that. Yeah. <clears throat> so I might even, um, like in my next tips from tourism, which I email out periodically, um, maybe I'll even put that in, you know, as a result of this work session, this is one of the things that was suggested, and um, <coughs> see if some of our other businesses that have pretty active social media programs uh, would be interested. I mean... Yeah, it should be citywide. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so... That I really liked, and and I would just say, um, you know, if anyone has ideas, or if you come across, you know, a new publication that you don't think I've seen, whatever it might be, you might be out to dinner in St. Louis, or you know, on a mini vacation in Kansas City or Springfield or something, and you come across something, um, pick up the phone and let me know, and. If it seems like a good fit for us, maybe we can see if we can, you know, do a little experimentation there. Good. All righty. And I don't know if this is new business or old business. Meaning changes. I think it's. I guess it's new business if it's under meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Because we didn't talk about it at a previous meeting. Either. Well, true. Because after the work session, this occurred to me, and I've talked to a couple of members about it, the nature of marketing makes it long term. So it seems to me that we would be better off meeting quarterly rather than monthly, because monthly meetings, we kind of walk all over the same statistics, and we're, view, we're we're looking at the same statistics over and over and over again. And because marketing is more long-term than immediate, you know, nobody's planning now for next week's ad, that it makes more sense if we were to meet quarterly. Now, first of all, I don't know if anybody would agree with that or not. And secondly, I don't know what we need to do to change the bylaws. If we can... Um, So maybe we need to, first of all, let's find out, is it, let's have a little discussion and think if anybody thinks that's a good idea. I will open the floor for discussion if anybody thinks that we should meet quarterly in that way. And then if we were to do that and our next meeting would be like in January, we would have a whole year's worth of numbers to look at. I think, I think it makes a, a lot of sense. I think it's a fabulous idea. Yeah, I, think I think if we prep for that and, you know, and, and bring ideas each time, it gives us a chance to think about them in between. And, and developing, and we also see how the advertising that we and the other things we put in place, what the results are. Yeah, you can over you a can, little bit over the course trends, of time, at least yeah. a little bit for month to month. You can yeah, as much, yeah, it must sound good that way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and in practice, it seemed like about every other meeting was canceled or whatever because there just wasn't much to talk about or mm -hmm. whatever. So, I think it would be helpful too, along with that to not spend so much of the meeting going over stuff. Oh, but we could get we could get those emailed yeah. to us yeah. prior to the meeting. Yeah. And that way if there or were an advisory council, or, let's advise about what's yeah, going to happen in the yeah. future. Yeah. Let's yeah. not talk about what's happening. Or just happened. you know a, a, a quick summary email ahead of time so we don't have to necessarily go over them through the meeting. 
Right. And if there's something that looked kind of wonky and we had a question or, or save or, the or, paper, don't Or, or something's yeah. really good and we do a big exclamation in caps so we, we know yeah. that ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. That way we'd save, save paper and save Sandra's time. But if you knew you had to do that quarterly, it wouldn't, I mean, to do that monthly, that would just be harrowing to have to prepare it and then attach it in an email and then more stuff. But if you knew. Yes, it if, is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, do we need to vote on that? Martin, you looked I, into this, didn't you? Yeah, I think the bylaws were adopted as part of a resolution that the Board of Aldermen passed establishing the Tourism Advisory Council. It's kind of a series of things that had to happen before we could do that, but that's not germane. Um, to amend bylaws that would require approval of the Board of Aldermen, uh, and they're certainly going to go along with your recommendation. Um, I would encourage you, however, that it, to think about whether there are also other things you'd like to change, and so we can take care of whatever other deficiencies you think there may be. If there are none, then it's a, a resolution of this Board recommending a change, which would then go on a Board of Aldermen meeting and they vote on it. And it's done by, that's done by ordinance, I think, so. What other changes would there be? I don't know. Oh. It's a review of bylaws to see something that's either not pertinent anymore or doesn't fit well. I don't, I read through them just in anticipation of this meeting and I, I didn't see anything, but hmm. they're not my bylaws. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could look for more things after this change that we're proposing. Maybe you could look for more things between now and January. The, um... Yeah, I, get, I don't. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine what else we would. Originally, there was a quarterly meeting. There was some concern about having evening meetings so people could attend. We did a couple of those, and attendance was not really enough to warrant worrying about it, and so we stopped doing that. This doesn't say anything about time of day, I don't think. Uh, no, no, this tells no, you yeah. to, to okay. set the time and place. Yeah, it was, yeah schedule, uh, <coughs> monthly schedule unless deemed otherwise, unless notified. Or we can move to cancel any meeting anytime, so we could at this time, if you wanted to, well, move to cancel the next two meetings to meet in January, pending uh, a change in ordinance. If I read that correctly. I think you're right. I think you could accomplish the goal without a change in the bylaw just by canceling the meetings you didn't want to have. But if that's your intention, you may as well change the bylaw. Well, we may as well. Right. Yeah, we could yeah, do that, we may we could do that now in lieu of yeah. changing the bylaws while that goes through, do a, do a resolution to ask the, the Board of Aldermen to change the bylaws, and in the meantime, notification to cancel those two meetings. Okay. November and December. Then. Right. So that would be the November and December. Be two meetings. different moves. <laughs> two different. Well, right. Right. Two different right. Yes. And okay. So first, I guess we need um, a motion to cancel the November meeting. We need November, December. Well, I think don't we have to do them separately? Can we do them together? November and I, December? I don't know. There's no... It is, it, go together. Okay, well, <laughs> I would entertain a motion to cancel the November and December meetings. So moved. Any second? I do. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and then um, we need a resolution requesting that the Board of Aldermen accept our plan to change our meetings to quarterly meetings. To, to change the bylaws. To change the to, bylaws. To have quarterly, to quarterly meetings. meetings. And is it necessary for me or someone to appear before the Board of Aldermen and well, Sandra that? can speak for you, but uh, we can put it on the next agenda. I, 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 it's not a specific item, right? They just do it. Yeah. Do you have Do you have language you'd like to? How would you like that expressed? <laughs> what What quarter would you? Do you want to nail down? 
Monthly? Yeah. Quarterly within the first month of each quarter, calendar quarter. Or you want to go by the, uh, the city? January, April, meeting? July, and October. Does that work? Yeah. Yes. With July designated as as the annual meeting okay. for elections and that. So we'd be having one of them right now, October. Right. So the yes, we, liaison is speaking to me. <laughs> we do have some language. Do you do you want it? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yes. If you did the what you were saying, January and and then and then, and then do the October one, you would have these cities end of the year September stuff probably for the October meeting, which might work fine. I mean, if, if you're looking at reviewing budget thing. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And or in the language that chairperson or any four city council members can call the special meeting at any time. That remains in, in So if place. we needed an extra one, we could always add an extra one in yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So the motion should be to amend the bylaws for whatever chapter and verse that it's, is. Yeah. Article to 4, read, section 1. As as okay. Now somebody say it. Okay. okay. Right, actually, How do you want it to read? Actually, I'll use this language. The city, the council should meet quarterly. I have one if you want to hear yeah. it. So, okay. The council shall meet regularly, at least quarterly, during an annual period. One such meeting, generally the July meeting, our closest to the month of July, will be designated as the annual meeting. And if we add that and strike the first two sentences of Article 4, Section 1, I, I think, think we got that will be good. I so move. And I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> it was Tom and Jack. I got that. Oh. Oh. Did you? Get, did you do, who wants the language? Can you read my notes? Oh, I'm sure you can. Okay. Okay. That done. Our next meeting, and I think the third week of January was the sixth. Would be the sixteenth. If you want to put that on your calendars, which I think it already was on the calendar as a regular monthly meeting, but now we can enjoy the holidays unencumbered. <laughs> 16th is correct. Yeah, good. And uh, Laura, do you have any information about the state of Missouri's wine passport? Uh, did you have something specific in mind or do you? I don't know anything about it. Oh, what what okay. do we know? So <laughs> the state um, last year, uh, started a wine pro uh, pa it's not really a passport program it's a they call it their MVP program Missouri visitors program and every time you visit a Missouri winery you can pick up a little ticket and on that ticket is a code and when you take that code home and punch it in your computer you create a little account and you earn points so let's say you come to my winery the first time you get 10,000 points and then you go to another winery, you get another 10,000 points. And for 15,000 points, you can be the proud owner of a corkscrew with, you know, some winery's <laughs> name written on or something. Um, the next time you come to my winery, maybe you'll only, I think, I, I don't know what the exact point is, but you don't get 10,000 points, you only get. So the, the idea behind it is to encourage folks to visit all the wineries in the state. There's over 130 wineries in the state now. Wow. So. But so once I've got, gotten your corkscrew, you're off the list. Um, not necessarily. I mean, you could save up your points and you could come back and buy another course. I mean, it's just like shopping. You can do okay. whatever you want with your points. That's, they're, they're your points to do with what you wish. And some people are saving them up to enter sweepstakes. Um, they're big uh, dinners and big experiences that different wineries are uh, hosting throughout the state. Um, this program's been quite successful in 2017, so the Wine and Grape Board has extended it through 2018. Uh, folks have to ask for the ticket. That's the, that's the kicker. They don't, we don't automatically pass them out. 
Um, so they have to come in and ask for them. And we're not allowed, if they, were, if they call us the next day and say, oh, I forgot, we're not allowed to give out codes over the phone, just so you know. Wow. It's a, that's a pretty big deal. Can't give them out, can't mail tickets, none of that. So. Do, um, do they does the state reimburse you for, like, if you give them a corkscrew? Or it's, they just on a it's absolutely free for us to participate. The state pays for all the tickets <coughs> and the website and all that stuff. Um, and then they, they've come to the wineries and asked. So we've donated, you know, I sent them 20 corkscrews. The wine trail sent in some tickets. Everyone's kind of donated the prizes. So you don't give the prizes out. The state gives the, the prizes. State, I mailed my 20 corkscrews to the state, and the state distributes those and um, sends them out as, as uh, points are redeemed. And do they base... They redeem the points based on attendance at your winery, or they may send... Cork, one of your cork screws to somebody that's ever been at your wine? It depends on the person. You know, if someone has 50,000 points, they can, maybe they never went to my winery, but maybe they want a cork screw. Okay. The they, they can want. request. They, yeah. they okay. can buy whatever they want. It's like a... It's a gift store. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Okay. So when you say state, you mean a government entity, or you mean... The Missouri Wine and Grape Board. Mm -hmm. They're sponsoring the program. Okay. So, so it's so all funded through them, um, and you know, and they're funded through taxes. And they're right. under the Department of Agriculture. Department right? of Ag, yes. So it's like a specialty, um, you know, agritourism right. kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Like Missouri Pork Producers. Or yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. But with better prizes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fun. All right. Pork stock, you just can't mail them. Can't I'm excited pork. that they <laughs> extended it. I'm really excited it's about it. It's been that. very popular. Well, I guess it's yeah. been, yeah. that means it was a good program. It's yeah. a great people program, like and that yeah. means people can still just build up their points. The yeah. point, yeah. Their points will carry over into 2018, so good. Happy shopping. Yeah. Cool. Okay, does anyone have anything else to bring to the table? Anybody know any news about the National Parks Initiative? I haven't heard anything yeah. recently. Well, the Rotary Club just recently did a um, letter of support. Yeah. So that was sent to request of the, the member of the National Park Service. Yes. But well, that's a good thing. So no, I don't. I mean, I, I, that, I'm not exactly sure how that came about, but the Rotary Club was pleased to do it. But no. So it's, so it's in committee right now on both right. sides. Yes. Yeah. Subcommittee, actually. And who knows? It may languish there for a good long while. Yeah. Who knows? Yes. Anyone have anything else to bring to the table? I have copies here of the October issue of Antiques and Collectible News. This is one that every year, um, part of the support that I provide specifically to the Rural Heritage Day is one of our signature events. They choose this publication as where they want some of that to go and so we're the town of the month and the event of the month for the month of October. event and town of the month rural heritage day and historic st john they're event. really good at sponsoring yeah. additional information for paid advertising yes we advertise with them and gotten very good yeah. results this is a free publication free, free to, publication free to the public and, and yeah. advertising is very yeah. reasonable and their support. If you if you pay an ad and send them an article, they will print the article. Yeah, we used to give I used to give oh, cool. in an antique shop. Yeah. And people so, enjoy picking up something for free. At the Rotary Club today, representatives of the museum group of which he is a part talked about this relationship they're establishing with this museum in Paris, I think he said. Mm -hmm. And the statement was, we mailed them a St. Genevieve medal, which came from ASLP. And that got the ball rolling, and we're going to have this long-standing relationship based on their receipt of this and, and, and their response. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. That was good news. Yep. Yeah. Sarah's also. Sarah's also a member of the Yeah. Program. She's the chairperson. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. And Jack was there. Yep. I will entertain a motion to adjourn if there is nothing else to bring to the table. I'm not even sure you need a motion for it.
Uh, no, you it's declare so adjournment. If you call for additional business, okay. hearing none, then you call for adjournment. Then I call for adjournment. All right.